back to RunToGold.com and we're playing with the new green screen so I hope you enjoy it. I was talking with a couple of my buddies today, uh, fellow investors, and one of them was uh, talking about this Japanese yen intervention. And you know what? The central banks around the world, they're really starting to intervene in the currency markets. And uh, like I've written before, it's a competitive devaluation. People are moving down the liquidity pyramid into safer, more liquid assets. And what's, what's happening is that the fiat currencies are evaporating as a result. So we're seeing the cost of commodities, real things, increase. Now, we're, we're also seeing a lot of action in the gold price, which is actually pretty predictable. I said, you know, it's going to consolidate for the rest of the summer, probably start moving up uh, beginning of September. Well, it was about a week later. Uh, and we've seen a big jump up to about 1270. You look at the 200 day moving average and things like that, we could probably hit 15, 1600 in January. Uh, will remain to be seen. One of my other friends who's a big time uh, entrepreneur over in India, he says that the gold market there is just hopping. Uh, they are just buying physical bullion like no tomorrow over there. And they've got the same problem with their currency evaporating, with the competitive devaluation. You know, the yen, uh, they're doing it there. Federal Reserve's engaged in quantitative easing, which will fail. And what we're seeing is people are saying, oh, well, consumer prices haven't increased. We're in deflation. Uh, we're not seeing these prices increase. And see, that's part of the problem. We've got both deflation and inflation at the same time, which I wrote about in a post uh, where I compared and contrasted the arguments between Gary North and Mish. So... One of the ways that we're seeing inflation affect the average ordinary consumer is in consumables. Things that have to be produced because they're consumed on a regular basis. For example, uh, you know, you might find that it's the same price, but instead of 64 ounces, you get 59 ounces uh, for your juice. Or uh, yesterday, you know, I was at Whole Foods getting my organic bread, which really is just bread that is real instead of fake, and the kind of bread that they used to produce, you know, 30, 40 years ago, but because of all the inflation that we've had, we're uh, getting much lower quality products than we did before. Well, anyways, the organic bread, $7.99 a loaf. It's crazy. Well... What's going to happen eventually? And, you know, I said January we might see fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar gold. It'll probably retreat again back to fourteen hundred or so. But we're going to see gold and silver reasserting themselves as money. And they're going to go up a lot. Now, one of the problems we've got, especially in the West, is that the average person doesn't have very much gold or silver. And the people that do have the gold and silver are the ones over in India or other parts of Asia, and they don't have a lot of debt. See, when the central banks want the gold price to go up, and they're manipulating the gold price up right now, uh, most likely, and uh, at least letting it run a little bit more, and Bangladesh just bought 10, 10 tons of, of bullion, well, what they want to accomplish with letting that gold price rise is to reduce the debt burden on the balance sheets, either of corporations or of individuals. Well, as I wrote about, if you took the five oil majors, you know, Exxon, uh, Chevron, Texaco, BP, <laughs> uh, if you took these five major oil companies and you took just their current assets, those are assets that are due within a year, if you took just their current assets and you took a third of 1% of their current assets. So we're talking a rounding error here, like 0.33 of 1%. It would buy every single ounce available for delivery on the COMEX. I mean, think about that for a second. Five corporations could just wipe the COMEX out of all their physical bullion. How much physical bullion does an average American have? I mean, they've got a whole bunch of debt uh, whether it's in the form of a uh, mortgage or student loans or credit cards or whatever it is. And 
you know, corporations, they've got a tremendous amount of debt, and a lot of them have raised just tremendous amounts of cash by selling debt. So they saw, oh, liquidity crisis, credit crisis in 08, so they issued a bunch of debt to get cash. Now they're sitting on the cash and it's not doing anything, but they've got this debt. So what the Fed wants to do, or at least central banks, what they usually want to do is, is revalue gold. You know, let gold rise in price. And what that would do is it would erode the debt burden on the balance sheets. It would make it easier for the corporations and the individuals to pay their debts. But because the, but because the corporations and the individuals that have the debt don't have any gold, there's not going to be this benefit from the rise in the gold price to the economy. Okay? Think about that for a second. GDP, when priced in gold, is going to just keep freezing and keep shrinking. Okay, there's, we, we might see increases in GDP when priced in dollars, but when priced in gold, GDP is down, you know, uh, almost 10% year over year. And that's because the economy really is, it's contracting and it's dying. And the reason it's dying is because there's so much debt on everybody's balance sheets that they have to take the productive parts of the economy and just feed them into these zombie banks uh, that are getting bailed out to meet debt service. So at the end of the day, what's going to happen is you know gold's going to go up, and the people that have the gold are going to have the purchasing power. For the most part, that's over in Asia and India as a general geographic. Uh, and demographic uh, concentration, but you know if if you don't if you don't got silver, or better yet, if you don't have gold, I mean, aren't these things just just fun to play with? Like this is going to be money again, and one ounce of gold, looking at that size of the liquidity pyramid, there's about seven million dollars of value in that liquidity pyramid for every one ounce of gold. And like this is gonna be money again, like it's gonna happen, and it's probably not too far off. You know, five, ten, fifteen years at the most, and that means that if you don't have any gold, and if you don't have any silver, you're gonna be screwed because you're gonna still have to pay taxes. You're gonna still have to pay a debt service. Hopefully, you don't have any debt. Uh, but if you do have debt, it's hopefully hedged by any type of physical bullion because then if you've got the physical bullion and you have the debt, then you're able to relieve that debt burden by selling, uh, by selling bu the bullion and paying off your debt. So you aren't going to be hurt quite as bad. Uh, but that's really the problem we've got is, and the central banks have got is that they've demonized gold and silver for so long. And, and you know, platinum, platinum is actually the even better buy. You know, one ounce of platinum is uh, right now only about 1.01 .01 times its 200-day moving average as opposed to, you know, 1.14 with silver. So silver and gold are still average value. Uh, platinum just went into average value. It's still, I think, a better deal than gold and silver. Uh, but, you know, the average person, they, they've got a bunch of debt, but they don't have the counter hedge. To that which is the real money and so as the gold price revalues they're not going to be able to necessarily reduce their debt burden which means that they aren't going to be able to take out new loans for further investment or uh, consumption things like that and so it's just going to further contract GDP in the real economy anyways that's a little bit of an update on uh, what's going on with the gold price suppression scheme it looks like they're letting it go up a little bit but it's not going to work and it's not going to accomplish what they want, which is to stimulate more of that consumer spending. So this is Trace Mayer at Run to Gold.